Well, hey friends, and welcome back. Today, I want to share with you 10 things that you can get rid of today that you won't even miss. Over time, we can get so used to seeing the things in our homes that we don't truly recognize our cluttered spaces for what they really are. We'll hold on to things that are providing us with very little function or value without even realizing it. So today, I want to help identify some of those often ignored areas that we can tend to store clutter in so we can take action to remove Move those items from our lives. So with that in mind, I want to get right into this list. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. Let's get started with the first thing that you can declutter today, which is mismatched food storage containers. We're starting off with a big one here. This is something that many of us have in our homes, whether because we've lost lids or the containers themselves over the years. And I feel like it's kind of that mismatched sock syndrome where we always have a tendency to want to hold on to those containers thinking that one day magically the right lid or the container is just going to show up again but the months pass and still there's no sign of the pair to that mismatched container. If that's something that you're guilty of, which if you are, don't worry, I am as well. But if you are, it's time to just be honest with yourself. These containers aren't doing you any service and are likely just taking up valuable space in your kitchen. So it's time to say farewell to those mismatched containers. Go through all your food storage containers and declutter any that are mismatched, broken, or warped. And one idea if once you've done this, you aren't really left with a whole lot of food storage containers would just be to completely overhaul the containers that you have to get a brand new set that can all mix and match interchangeably. And that way you can have kind of like a fresh stock of food storage containers that you can use for years to come. And you're not always having to worry about making sure that you have a container and lid that match perfectly. So something that I did last year, we went from having all types of different you know, sizes and shapes containers, different brands as well, to just having one uniform set. And I found that to be a really simple swap that has made kind of this problem a whole lot easier to manage on an ongoing basis. This isn't necessary, of course, especially if once you go through this process, you're still left with a considerable amount, but it can be helpful. All right, but then the second thing that you can declutter today is clothing that you've been meaning to get tailored, but have just never gotten around to. I feel like there are kind of two types of people in the world. There are those who actually bring their clothing in to get altered, and then there are those who leave the clothing that they want to get altered in a pile only for it to sit for months and months without ever anything happening to it and it just kind of collects dust. If you're in that second camp and you have clothing that you've been meaning to get altered for months or maybe even years, it's time to either take action or to declutter those items. What I'd recommend is setting a timer right now. Give yourself 48 hours to take your clothing items to a tailor. If you haven't done it by then, just declutter those items. With situations like this, it's really easy for our clothes to get caught up in a bit of a limbo state, but what that really ends up being, especially as it's prolonged by weeks and then months, is it really is just a new source of clutter. So it really is best just with situations like this to take action or to declutter. And right then three is an easy one and that's just scrap paper and wrappers. With this one, I'm talking about things like that bit of note paper that you wrote on in the kitchen, the receipts stuffed at the bottom of your purse or empty gum wrappers scattered around your car. This is one of those areas where far from missing these things, you'll be glad that you got rid of them. So go through any purses or bags that you often carry, your cars, your junk drawer, or anywhere else where these bits of paper tend to multiply. And then another big kind of low effort, high impact decluttering category is to take some time to go through when to remove any stretched out underwear, bras, or socks. Over time, our undergarments just naturally tend to wear out. Things don't fit as well as they used to. So it's important to set aside time just every so often to go through your undergarments and remove what's no longer working for you. So what I'd recommend is just set aside five minutes that's really as long as it takes and just remove anything that's stretched or worn out. Just like with those scrap papers, keeping worn out undergarments in your closet is actually more of a nuisance than a benefit. So this really is time well spent. All right, but then another great category that you can declutter is any decorations that don't get used. Maybe you've bought pieces of decor that you really liked at the store, but when you brought it home, it just didn't quite work in your space. Or maybe you made a piece of art either at a wine and paint night, or it was just a project that you did on your own. You had plans of hanging it up in your home 
home, but you just didn't quite love how it turned out. Either way, if you're not actively displaying that decor in your home, it's not useful to you and it's okay to move on from it. I know sometimes with things like this, there can be a bit of a feeling of loss, but what I really think is important for us to understand is often what we're feeling in that sense of loss isn't actually the loss of the item itself, but more so the loss of the idea of what we wanted that thing to be, but it isn't. And that's okay, that's just life. Not everything is going to work out exactly the way that we want it to, but it's important when it comes to things like this that we're not dealing with the what could have been or what we wanted to be, but instead with what actually is. So just be real with yourself if you got or made something for yourself that just didn't quite work out. Give yourself permission to move on if need be. All right, then six is another easy one, and that's condiment packets. This is one of those things that we'll often save thinking that we'll use, but how often do we actually? I know I personally at least will always reach for the actual ketchup or the actual soy sauce bottle in our pantry or fridge. So rather than being useful, these packets will just go unused in drawers, taking up space and often making them feel quite messy as well. Having all those random loose items floating about really can be a major source of disorganization and clutter. So just do a quick clear out and get rid of any unused condiment packets that you may have. And then another big one is cleaning supplies attachments that you never use. I find that vacuums can be a big culprit with this one. They'll often come with a whole host of attachments of which one, maybe two are actually useful and the rest really just cause clutter. But whether it's with your vacuum, your mop, your duster or something else entirely, I'd recommend keeping what, if any, of the attachments that you actually use then just decluttering the rest. But then one a bit more subtle, but still very relevant thing that you can declutter is excess flower vases. This is just another one of those categories of items that I find can often multiply without our even being aware of it. Whether we've been given a number in arrangements, bought them on sale or something else entirely, many of us have more of them than we actually need or practically use. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Even for those of us who love having fresh flowers in our home and who often use our vases, there are typically some that we prefer using over others. There are vases that we use again and again and are almost constantly in use and others that kind of get neglected that we don't reach for as often if ever. Right now it can be a great opportunity just to declutter any excess that you may have. Get rid of any that you don't reach for or if you have too many, consider paring down your collection. Be realistic about how many vases you actually use and try to pair the number that you keep down to just that. And then another really quick thing that you can declutter is just any pens that you have that don't work. We really are just getting rid of a lot of those little annoyances today. This one especially though is a real pet peeve of mine. So so do yourself a favor, get out a piece of paper and just take two minutes and go through all of the pens you have, test to see which ones work and get rid of any that don't. And hey, while you're at it, if you have way too many pens or maybe just ones that you don't like, why not get rid of those too? I love this as one of those like little favors for your future self and it's an easy way just to make sure that you never have to deal with the frustration of trying to search for a pen that works. All right, but then the final thing that you can declutter today is old bedding. I feel like a lot of us have a pile of old bedding either shoved at the back of our closet or at the very bottom of our linen cupboard that we just never use. It's like automatic when we go to buy or are given new sheets, we just hold on to the old one. Which of course, it can be useful to have a backup, but there's just a point where it's a bit unnecessary. So personally, what I like to do is to keep one sheet set for every available bed set up in our home. If you want, especially if you have kids, it could be a good idea to keep one backup for each as well. But I find that it's just an easy, practical rule that can help keep the number of sheets that you have in check. But of course, as with everything, the goal here is just to find an amount of bedding that's comfortable and practical for you. So feel free to either use this rule yourself or adjust it as needed. All right, but that's the list. Those are 10 things that you can declutter from your home today that you won't even miss. 
I really hope that this gives you some inspiration and motivation as you declutter your home. If you enjoyed this video, don't worry, I've got more where this came from. This is actually the second video in a series I've done on this topic. So for 10 entirely new ideas of things that you can declutter today without missing, go ahead and check out the link in the description box below. It's going to take you right to that video. And of course, if you're wanting to dig deeper, you're ready to declutter your home once and for all, I definitely recommend checking out my ebook, The Simple Guide to Decluttering Your Home. That's just going to walk you through the entire decluttering process step by step. It really is a great resource. It's easy to read, but just jam packed with all of my best suggestions and advice for decluttering. So definitely check that out if you're interested. And again, that's just going to be in the description box for you. Now, I'd love to know, are you guilty of storing any of the items on this list? If you are, I'd love to hear about it. So be sure to let me know in the comments below, especially if you're planning on taking action on those areas. I'd love to hear about that. But as always, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you all have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one, friends. Bye.